Differentiating yourself is absolutely critical towards your success, whether you're an account executive or you're a business development rep. In this episode today, we're going to give you three easy ways that you can differentiate yourself from your competition. And I promise you, they're not overly complicated. And most of the people that you go up against are not going to do these. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today, and on this episode, I'm going to give you three easy ways that you can stand out from your competition, and I guarantee that most of your competitors are not doing these, at least the majority of sales reps are not taking advantage of it. And it's, it's just a simple strategy on how you can uh, stand out. And if this is your first time listening to one of our video uh, podcasts or watching one of our videos, I'm asking you to go ahead and connect with me. You can find me on most social platforms as Donald C. Kelly, specifically on LinkedIn. Let me know you found the podcast as well as go ahead and check out our Facebook group, The Sales Evangelizers. It would be an absolute honor to have you join that community as well. Let's go into this episode right away. Why is differentiating so critical? I mean, you have so many people going up against you right now when it comes towards selling. I mean, our book that I'm, my book that I'm launching later this year, it's called Sell It Like a Mango. This concept comes from growing up in Jamaica when we see people who are selling the same exact type of fruits, the same mango from the same region. I mean, from the same, uh, the same country, for goodness sakes. But one is able to stand out from the other. What is it that makes that one seller able to stand out from the other mango seller? It's not because they have better leads. It's guarantee, a guarantee you it's because that person goes above and beyond. They do a little bit more. And that's what my book is all about, breaking that down. And I want to give you st- three strategies that I see that has helped me as a sales professional. Because w- no matter what you sell, just like mangoes, you have com- competitors that have products that are almost identical in many ways, can do the same thing that your product can do. It just does it in a different way. And if you're the only one in that field, then I probably won't last too long. They're going to be competitors. But you want to differentiate yourself, especially as a sales rep. Your company will probably do some of the marketing things. Here are three things that I want you to know. The first one is to be curious. And here's where curiosity might work for you. I interviewed recently, actually it was today, it's an episode that's coming out, Uh, I think it's going to be later on, I interviewed a professional gatekeeper. This lady, she is an executive assistant for some very well-known, very successful folks and even some celebrities. And she said the average person um, that she worked with can get anywhere from 250 to 1,000 emails. I know it's a large gap there, but it's amazing. Uh, An executive, 1,000 emails a day. Everyone's trying to sell them. One of the things that she stressed was this idea that sales reps should come to the table. They need to come with more information. The only way you have more information is if you come with right intel. I'm not talking about surface level things to know where Jake went to school, the prospect. It's about understanding why Jake company is progressing the way they are right now. What's their big initiative? What's their goal? What's their what's their, their five-year plan or three-year plan? Some of the stuff you may not be able to get just from Google in it, but you might be able to. And some of you may get from just calling into the organization and just asking people because you're curious. You're going to get more intel. Now, when you're having a conversation, a discovery call, you can say, I understand from when I spoke to the, uh, your, your organization from research I got that you guys are looking to expand into New Mexico or into you know, Arizona or into Mexico next year or into going into South America, the, the, the you know, Spanish-speaking um, part of your business. And I'm curious, how are you guys planning on going about doing that with blah, blah, blah in the middle of you know, with COVID or, or whatnot? Now, this is a thoughtful question because you're bringing intel that you've gathered rather than just showing up and say, hey, I see that you guys have some a nice new logo. Congratulations on that. That's different than coming with some intel. And that's where you want to come from. That's the type of the avenue you want to come from when when I speak about being curious. So your job is to get more than they do, because if you're getting the same exact information as that prospect from that prospect as the other company, you're you're already done. And if you think about this as well. If the prospect is hearing the same exact questions from both of you, they're going to say, well, there's nothing that's to differentiate these companies, so I'm just going to focus on the price towards them. You want to make sure you come with a little bit more, and that's where it comes I want you to be one step ahead. What I mean by this is just looking how you can be one step ahead of most of your competition, and that's going to help you to differentiate yourself. Here are two, like, two simple, stupid simple things that I promise you most of your competitors are not going to do. And one of those ways you can be a step ahead is by having an agenda. 
I know, mind blowing, right? And also doing a, a, a recap email. I can tell you that from the many reps that I work with, uh, many salespeople who try to sell me something, I don't get that. And and be totally frank, I have gone through selling situations where I've not done that faithfully as well. It's something that salespeople slip on. But here's what happens in a prospect eyes. Most of those prospects now would say, oh man, they took the time to write that out and to give me a recap. That person really cares for this business. They really want to get this account. They're really trying to you know, guide. It just makes you look more professional than just showing up with your hands out. Can you give me some money? Help me out here, man. I'm trying to close a deal. I'm winning a TV if I close this deal. No, come with some real good stuff. And, and that's one of the ways you can stand out. The agenda piece as well. If I'm going to a meeting with a busy executive, because I know that they have, this is, when I interviewed this executive assistant, she shared with me that these executives probably get about anywhere from about five to 15 meetings, meetings a day. And her job is to make sure that meeting counts. If that's the case, I want to make sure she looks good, but I also want to make sure I get a chance to look good in front of this executive and that I don't get canceled or my meeting gets delayed or you know end shortly. I want to come with that meeting being like the best meeting that he had or she had for the day. So here's one of the ways you can do that. Have an agenda. Help your executive assistant and also help the, the client that they, or prospect that they can know exactly what you're going to be discussing and they can see some talking points that you have and some direction of where you want to go with this conversation. I promise you that's going to help you out, but most salespeople don't get that. I can tell you I don't get agendas from sellers when they send it to me. You might say, well, nobody cares. Yeah, I do. If I can get that conversation guide that this is what they're going to focus on, I'm like this person mean business. They came prepared. If they're doing this much stuff just for a discovery call, just for a simple 15, 20-minute meeting, what are they going to do when they're working with my organization? That's the point I'm trying to get across is that it, trans it translates and tells that level of expertise and how you're going to differentiate yourself. So, you what I mean by this when I'm talking about being creative is think about your prospects. Like, how can I how can I make how can I make my prospect like uh, you know just just see me above all the other folks that I work with. And here's one of the things that you can do is just think outside the box. Think unconventional. You're going to send this agenda. You're going to send a calendar invite, man. Use videos. I can still tell you that on the, I probably get maybe in a week, probably like two videos, if that. And then I have like thousands of emails that come through. But if you think about it from, or maybe not thousands, maybe hundreds of emails that come through, maybe about five, six, seven, hundred, maybe a thousand emails come through in a week. I'm not that big executive yet. But in that vein, how many of those are actual videos of somebody helping and guiding me? Not a lot because a lot of salespeople are not being creative. I mean, the, the fact is like they're just trying to, I'm probably on their list and I'm just being checked off. And this is, you know, that's, it's meeting with Donald or I'm doing an outreach to Donald. I'm in an outreach campaign. I'm a part of the sequence and that's about it. But it's not like I'm I am being, they're not personalizing something. Great is to make your per prospect look good. So go on LinkedIn, write a little post and just compliment the person's company and tag them in it as well. That's going to make you stand out. If I can make your company look good or make you look good to other people, it's going to be a huge differentiating factor. Is there something that they did recently or if there were, I mean, you had a conversation with them and they shared a, a unique insight, a quote, ask them, hey, it's okay if I share that quote with some of my friends in their discovery call. Hey, I just had a conversation with Donald and you know, one of the things that he shared was this. I was really, I love this quote because it inspires me. I would love to hear your feeling on a quote like this. But you're using that person, you're standing out from the pack. It's going to fulfill the creativity one, but it's going to make your prospect look good. And if there's something that a prospect achieve personally, you want to accomplish, you want to tell them, uh, tell the world about that. Maybe they got mentioned in a magazine, or they got, uh, you know, something happened with the organization recently. Kudos to you. I encourage you to try these. Test them out. Let me know. Find our Facebook group, the Sales Evangelizers, or find me on LinkedIn, Donald C. Kelly, and let me know how it worked for you. Would love to hear what's your crew. What what do you do to make sure you stand out from the com competitors? Put that in a group. As always, check out our sponsors. They're giving you away some amazing deals. And I use these tools internally, my team and I, so I know it works and I want you to see it and see the benefit of it as well. As always, I want you to find more ideal customers. I want you to know what to say when you reach out to them. I want you to be able to build stronger value and close more deals. But most importantly, I want you to go out each and every single day and do big things. Thanks so much. Have a good one.
Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right hand corner. Also to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools, and things that are gonna help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.